This will disappear. You may be going through some calamity at home or, or through your life and, and come into the church and understand that being on your heart. But when you think about how Jesus can heal that situation, and, and you think about how He loves you and how He saved your soul, even in the midst of all this stuff I read in Romans chapter 1, even in the midst of evil, He saved your soul and showed you what good and evil was and said, come away from the evil and follow thy me. Like He told Matthew, you'll start worshiping Him in spirit and truth. And not only will your mouth cry out to Him, but your heart will be crying out to Him. And that's where the power of God exists. The power of God exists from the heart. The heart worship. I found this out a long time ago. When I laid a prayer up for my wife that was dying in the hospital, I said prayer after prayer with my lips, and I heard other people praying with their lips, and the minister come in, and he prayed too, and I'm not saying he wasn't sincere. I'm just saying I have wasn't touched yet. It didn't come from the inner depths of my heart. It was not effectual or fervent yet until it broke me. Amen. When it breaks you and it's effectual and it's fervent from your heart, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That's right. But if it's effectual fervent just from your lips, it don't avail of nothing. Right. Same with worship. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. There ought to be a healthy fear of God these days. But the ones he sent home were the ones that feared man over God. We shouldn't fear no man. That's right. Nobody. I don't care what the politicians do. I don't care what laws have been made. We're going to stand up for Jesus. What did Daniel do? When Nebuchadnezzar, no, it wasn't Nebuchadnezzar, excuse me. Nebuchadnezzar had all gone. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did. They stood up when Nebuchadnezzar made an image. But when Darius was told to make a decree, Daniel, that nobody else could worship any other God in this certain time period, what did Daniel do? What did he do? Go home. He went home and opened up his shades. <laughs> he didn't hide from nobody. He said, I'm going to worship like I've been worshiping for years, and I'm not going to let anybody dictate to me how I worship my God. Amen. And in front of everybody, he prayed and bowed down and prayed to his heavenly Father. Amen. And they came against him, and they hold him in the lion's den. Where were the people of Israel dwelling? A couple weeks ago, we just talked about it. They were dwelling in what? Strongholds and caves. Dens. Caves and lion's den. Well, let me tell you, Daniel was thrown into a lion's den, but God protected him. Hell yeah. So we ain't got to fear nothing, do we? <laughs> it don't matter what they make. We don't fear nothing, but Jesus goes on to say, right here, verse 32, Whosoever therefore should confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. Y'all heard that? Watch this. But whosoever shall deny me before me, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. These are the words of the Lord Jesus. That lets you know something, don't If we fear men and the repercussions of what they can do, or the fallout, oh, I'm going to get fired now. Believe me, all these thoughts run through your mind, I promise you. I had a Jewish guy call, on, call in on me and try to get me fired. And I mean, I, it was running through my mind, heart was beating fast, I was called to the carpet, my boss called me in. There's a 2004, and she was telling me, you can't do this. You know, because this is their job. They were Christians, but still, it's a job. You know what I mean? And you can run customers off or offend people. And all I can say is I would use better discernment. However, I will not ever stop proclaiming as long as He holds me now. As long as the Holy Spirit holds my heart, I will never stop proclaiming Amen. the Lord Jesus Christ as God. Amen. And I will never stop proclaiming what He's done in my life. Amen. That's our testimony. That's what we're supposed to do. But we're going to be tried on this. We're going to be tested on this. If we're ashamed of Him, then we may fall short a few times, but the Lord, if He'll work with you, He's merciful. But still, if you continue all your life to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, what's going to happen? When you get up there, he's going to be ashamed of you. Yep. That's what he said, not there. Y'all say, that's a hard word. That's hell, fine brimstone. That's Jesus. Do we love him or not? Yep. We got to make up our mind. Do we love the whole Lamb of God or just parts of the Lamb of God? Mm -hmm. I don't go. That's a whole other sermon. Go with me back to uh, Genesis. This is a good thing, y'all, because when he gives you a conviction, 
He also gives you a strength by the Holy Spirit and a power. And that's what they have in the book of Acts. With boldness did Peter stand up after Peter had denied him three times. Christ went back and got him and forgave him. But with boldness after he got filled with power of the Holy Spirit, he stood up and proclaimed who? He proclaimed Jesus in front of the same people that crucified Jesus. Now that's strong. You know what I'm talking about? I question myself on that. When they just killed Jesus. They just put, beat him up to death and put him on the cross and nailed him. And I, would I stand up and do that? Woo! That's the Spirit. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not you. We're supposed to die daily and let Him live. If we're really dying daily, we're not afraid. Have you ever seen